Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make With Tech, the YouTube channel where we teach you how to use desktop technology to create, to innovate, to make things. Things that in the past were only possible in large, complex manufacturing facilities. Today, we're gonna cover what in the United States we like to call inside baseball. Now, inside baseball is a slang for any time you look inside of a business or a process and you learn a bunch of the nitty gritties about that process. And today's topic is Cura 5.0. Cura 5.0 is a new release of the Cura 3D printer slicer from Ultimaker, and it includes a completely new internal slicer engine, the engine that determines how lines are printed in your 3D printer. And the question I want to explore today is, is this new engine revolutionary or a yawn? No big deal. Is Cura just playing catch up or are they leaping ahead of the industry? So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, before we get into the meat of this video, I want to remind you that as a YouTube channel, we live based on your views. Your views allow us to continue making videos. So if you like what you see today, please subscribe, click on the bell. The YouTube algorithm likes that when you click on the bell. And most importantly, recommend this channel to everyone you know. But Make With Tech is more than just a YouTube channel. It's now a directory of 3D printing models. You can go to models.makewithtech.com and learn about how you can find models to print on your 3D printer. It's a place to go and discuss interesting topics with other people interested in making, creating, and innovating at forum.makewithtech.com. So I welcome you if you're new to the Make With Tech community, and if you've been watching this channel for years, thanks for watching another video. So now let's get started on Cura 5.0. Before we do that though, we need to recognize that the business environment that Cura is in is changing. Cura is completely open source. You can go to GitHub, you can download the source code, you can fork it, you can make your own. That just means make your own version of Cura. You can modify it, you can do what you want. But it's sponsored and it's been sponsored for years by Ultimaker, who's done a Herculean job of really supporting the software product. But there's big news. Let's look at the screen and see this big news together. MakerBot and Ultimaker agree to merge to accelerate global adoption of additive manufacturing. Wow, that would be interesting, except I really thought MakerBot was owned by Stratasys. In fact, in 2013, Stratasys bought 100% of MakerBot. Now, what's even more interesting about it is MakerBot, when they got started, was only able to begin making 3D printers for, at that point, hobbyist use because a Stratasys patent had expired. So Stratasys has all these patents. A little startup in Brooklyn starts making 3D printers. A number of years later, Stratasys buys that startup, another startup in the Netherlands, then merges with MakerBot, and it sounds like they're being spun out of Stratasys, that it wasn't really a great marriage. So Ultimaker and MakerBot will really be a standalone company. Stratasys will own less than half of it. The original backers, some of the original backers of Ultimaker will own more than half of it. And the story continues. Now, what's that going to impact for you and I? Well, if you use Thingiverse, it might impact you because MakerBot owns Thingiverse. 
if you use Cura, it might impact you because Ultimaker owns or Ultimaker doesn't own, but they sponsor Cura. Okay, now let's talk about Cura 5.0. The big news is the new slicing engine, which is highly optimized, executes a little bit faster, but more importantly, produces more accurate slicing of models with less lines. Why does less lines matter? Well, when you think about a 3D printer, it prints lines. Any shape, even a circle, is a bunch of very small segments or lines. The fewer lines it can print, the faster it's going to print. As an example, if somewhere it needs to print a lot of little tiny lines, it's gonna go very slow. So line optimization is very important. That was the big news. But there's another news. Let's look at this slide together. As part of the improvement in the engine, they made improvements in the flow control mechanisms. There are a whole set of new settings for walls we'll look at. Because of this new engine, you can print finer details and thinner walls. Depending on your printer, it will be faster, some cases significantly faster. For all of us Mac users, big news, it fully supports the M1, now the M2 variant of Macs. And there have been some minor UI improvements, not over significant, in my opinion. So let's concentrate on the new engine and see what it does. But to do that, I don't want to look at it in isolation. I want to compare it to Cura 4.13, which was the most recent version. Actually, I believe it was 4.13.1 was the most recent version of the four dot line of Cura slicers. We'll compare it to the most recent version of Prusser Slicer, and we'll compare it to the most recent release of IdeaMaker. So we're really going to compare four slicers together. Let's start with Cura. Now, in comparing these, we need something to print. So I created this little tiny object and it has some very special characteristics. Let's look at the screen. You'll see the numbers across the top, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, 2.0. .0. What are those? Those are multiples of nozzle size. So when you're 3D printing, you're laying down a bead or a line of plastic or other materials that are extruded through the nozzle. 3D printing a house, it's actually you're laying down concrete. The nozzle has a set size. So there's a limited variability that you have over the size of that bead. If you put a little more pressure on it, you'll force a little more material out, it'll spread a little more, it'll be a little wider of a line. If you under extrude, you'll end up with a more narrow line. But in general, a printer, a 3D printer is optimal when printing at the nozzle diameter. So I purposely, in this model, created a series of components, walls, areas that are not even multiples of the nozzle. So instead of making it 2.8 millimeters, the wall on the left side is 2.9. The wall on the right is 0.9. There's an area that wants, that's 1.5. And by creating these unusual shapes, I ended up with a test item that could test the slicer's ability to calculate the optimal walls to put in each area. Let's look at Cura 4.13. First, on the right-hand side, you'll see I have fill gaps between walls set to everywhere. That's going to maximize how dense it is between walls because if the multiples don't work out. If you don't have that checked, it will just leave a space between those walls. So the end result of that is that if you look at this print, down here in the center, you'll see there's an extra segment of fill that's been put in. There's a little fill here, here, there's a little fill here. But you'll also notice that over here on the left-hand side, the gap between these walls is filled by a bunch of small segments side by side. That's gonna actually take a long time to print. 
and the adhesion between those small segments is not as good as adhesion would be between solid walls. Now, let's look at how that actually printed. And you can see here, and I'm looking at this up close, I'll put it on the screen in a zoomed in image. Um, it's really hard to see what pattern is used to print these small areas. Because in essence, the plastic more or less melts together. But it will impact speed and it potentially will impact strength. So let's see what Cura 5 does. In Cura 5, all those small segments are gone. There's no small segments in here. They're just the two outer walls. And here it used straight lines for those areas. That's going to be quite a bit stronger. Now, the straight lines I understand. That's an optimization of the algorithm for filling in spaces. But what about over here where those small fill items are no longer present? How did it do that? Well, let's look at the next slide. When you're in preview mode in Cura, you can look at the line structure, but you also can look at the line width. And I believe they call it line type and line width. Here we're looking at line width, which is color coded. And you'll see in Cura 5, the line width can go from 0.3 millimeters, by the way, that's a parameter, to 0.63 millimeters. That's impacted by that minimum parameter. So these lines in here work because they're printed, see the orange color here? They're printed at thicker than 0.4. They're over extruded. There's over extrusion up here. All the areas where there were little fillers before are now over extruded areas. Remarkable. That seems like quite an improvement. But wait, Cura 4 had the ability to vary extrusion. So let's look at that. We'll see here in Cura 4, there are a couple areas where the color is not orange. And that shows under extrusion. It extruded less material. But you'll see the maximum extrusion is nozzle width. So in Cura 4, it appears it didn't have the ability to extrude significantly more than nozzle width. It optimized below nozzle width for fine features, but not above nozzle width. So we've just discovered one of the changes in addition to the algorithmic changes. Now, in order to support that, there are a series of new parameters. I have the parameters as they look on the right side of the screen. On the left side, we'll see what they are. So you have the minimum line width. Remember we saw the 0.3? Well, that was a rounded number. It's actually set to 0.34 by default. You have something called minimum even line width. So Cure, I don't know why it calls them even and odd, but in the documentation behind it, it describes the even lines as normal walls and the odd lines as the gap filling walls. So you can set a minimum line width for your standard walls and for those lines, those walls that filled the gaps. And we saw those on the left hand side in the previous screen. And there's another very interesting parameter called add middle line threshold. That determines when Cura should add extra lines in between to add solidity to the model to make sure there are no gaps. Now, this is nice, but is this really new? So let's look at the same print sliced with very similar parameters. Now they're not identical because slicers are very different, but similar parameters in Prusa Slicer. You'll see here that Prusa Slicer did add additional fill. It looks more like Cura version four. And in this area, it used a side-by-side -side fill in order to create the base. So Prusa Slicer 2.4.2 looks much closer to Cura four than to Cura five. 
Now let's look at a third one called Idea Maker from Ray's Technologies. And we'll see here that Idea Maker seems to leave a lot of gaps. So it doesn't attempt to fill all those gaps, it just leaves them there. Now, there might have been a parameter I missed, I couldn't find, that would have filled those gaps. But most importantly, it uses vertical lines in this area on the left-hand side. So it's a bit of a hybrid between them. If we put these four up on the screen together, you'll see the side-by-side -side cross hatch here in Cura 4 and Prusa. You'll see the vertical lines in Cura 5 and Idea Maker. So it's a bit of a mixed picture about what the different engines do. Now, let's think about time. As I indicated, those fine fill-in lines are not optimal. In addition, the new Cura engine has optimized a range of travel moves and other moves to just make it a more efficient slicer. The problem I had is that this is just too small to really get a good indication of speed. But I'll, I'll show you what I did and further research is needed in this area. So Cura 4 was 25 minutes, Cura 5 was 24 minutes. So um, a little bit faster. Interestingly enough, Prusa is 19 minutes. Prusa Slicer is known as creating really optimal paths. And by optimizing the travel paths and other paths, it creates prints that just print faster. And Idea Maker was also 25 minutes. So there's some indication here that Cura 5 is faster due to its optimizations, but maybe not as optimized for speed as Prusa Slicer was. So folks, this was a really detailed thing. And if you want to discuss it some more, go to forum.makewithtech.com, post your comments there, post prints there, and there are thousands of people there discussing all my videos. But what's my conclusion? My conclusion is that I am impressed with the rate of innovation that Altamaker applies to Cura, and I sure hope that doesn't change under the new management structure. That said, I don't see this really as being significant enough that I would switch slicers because of that. And in fact, I think your choice of a 3D printer slicer is really comes down to personal preference. Some people like blue, some people like orange. And in that regard, it's the slicer you're most comfortable with, you're most familiar with, maybe you know best, maybe it's the first slicer you used. In my case, I use slicers for different things. So I use Idea Maker for IDEX 3D printers. I use Cura as my day-to-day go-to slicers, but for changing colors on a single color printer where I want to inject change filament commands into my command flow, Prusa does that better than anyone else. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave comments below or at forum.makewithtech.com. If you're looking for 3D printing models, check out models.makewithtech.com. Thanks so much. Let's continue to learn things together.